Here we go again. So we have a couple of posts out on Facebook groups here in San Felipe uh, trying to find a kitty to bring on board to catch this rat. We heard that the scent alone of a cat will make a rat run, so that was the hope. Um, but ideally we wanted to like borrow someone's good mouse or cat for a couple of days, bring them on board, and uh, hopefully the rat would be taken care of, and then uh, give the kitty back. But I think that worried too many people, like something might happen to the cat. Which I understand. I mean, being on a boat is completely different than being in their backyard or their home. So anyway, we then decided to try to adopt a kitty or rescue a kitty. There were uh, several cats in the marina that we thought we could uh, try to rescue. And the only one though that we could get close enough to touch. Hi kitty kitty, aren't you cute? We found out had a litter of kittens, like just three or four weeks old. So that didn't work. Uh, we did finally get a response that somebody had some cats, so we went ahead and adopted a kitty. She is about five months old. She's super sweet. Strange behavior, like uh, she's more like a dog than a cat. She loves to get up underneath your arms and make you pet her and she comes up on your lap and she's adjusting well, I think. The dogs are not too sure about her. We even had uh, both dogs and the cat sleeping with us at night. Unfortunately, she was not even the least bit interested in the rat. Uh, she never she never even seemed like she was interested in the smell of the rat. Um, but she was a pretty young kitten too, so. But I will say that after three days of the cat being on board with us, we finally stopped seeing signs of the rat in our living space, which was just really nice. But we heard it every night. We could hear it rummaging through our stuff down below and it was just, oh, really, really frustrating. In fact, Chris was in the lazarette uh, and he scurried right across his feet. Oh my gosh. Anyway, we're desperate um, and the cat isn't doing the trick, but she's a sweetheart. You are so silly. So we're still in San Felipe right now and um, getting ready to uh, sail 70 miles over to Puerto Penasco to have some repairs done uh, because they can haul us out over there. And because of that, I, we're gonna have to sail at night some and I have to repair the running lights on the, on the bow. And so here's the old fixture right there. I've modified quite a bit. It has two attachments side by side, horizontally, to attach it to the pulpit. The new fixture, of course, it has a pair of bolts vertically up and down, which can't be used because there's a stainless steel bar there. I'd have to drill all the way through it, put a long bolt, um, which seemed a little bit excessive. So what I did, I'm gonna throw this away, but I'm gonna use this back plate here as an adapter plate. And what I've done is take my multi-tool and I've cut off the fixture and the bulb and some bumps and some knobs here. I have found a couple of appropriate screws and a spacer to keep this away from the stainless steel plate so that I can pass the uh, cord behind it. This is going to be mounted here just like this. I've drilled a pair of holes vertically. This is going to be bolted like that so my new fixture can be snapped in there. Let me show you what it looks like in front. There's the mounting plate right there that I'm going to put it on. There's some crispy old wires that I have. Whoops, just busted that off. The red insulation is pretty pliable, but the black insulation is very stiff. Might have an issue wiring this doggone thing running and I can't pull it through. The electrical wire to the light comes down along here, along here, down this stanchion through an opening and into the chain locker. The chain locker is full of chain so I can't even work in there so for now I do have a, an intact electrical wire to there so I'm just gonna make up my connection right there, wrap it up real good and then um, and get on the heart in Penasco dump this chain off because I want to have it regalvanized or put a new chain in anyway. The chain locker will be empty and I can make up uh, new wiring from here to there all the way. New bolt, new spacer, new adapter plate, stainless steel nylock nuts. So here's the final product. Voila, new light. Two miles, two nautical miles as required by the uh, U.S. Coast Guard. 
suddenly our uh, power just went out. So it shows we have 120 volts. Our breakers are set. These are the usually the two that pop. We try turning them off and back on again and still it just shows a fault of high volts. No ground wire. Remember Victor, he adjusted that at one point. What are you finding? It's this. Oh, stupid rats. Yeah, there's poo down in here all over. Yeah, okay. Oh my goodness. What the heck? It got hot. I don't know if I have another one of these though. And look, the screws aren't even in there to hold it together. And yeah, this is all burned completely apart here. It's, it's a good thing we didn't burn the boat down. Keep trying to plug it in because that's a total fire issue. But you had another one. That's awesome. Yeah. Weird wire. Look at that. It, like one of them is encapsulated in the sheath. Looks good, babe. Well. 10 volts. That's it. 10 volts. Huh. No wonder the dishwasher wouldn't work. Hmm. Terrible. Terrible power here in San Felipe. It fired up beautifully. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so now try the refrigerators. Yep. Oh, turned right on. So it's not the refrigerators. The refrigerators work. They turn on beautifully with the generator, yeah. but they do not work under the San Felipe Marina power. Yeah, we gotta do a review on this whole San Felipe Marina. They just deliver terrible power. We have seen 129.4 volts of alternating current. We see power spikes and power drops to where we think that it's burned up our, our dishwasher, motherboard or something. It won't work anymore. And um, like we just now demonstrated, our refrigerators refuse to run on shore power. Fired up the generator, turn on the refrigerators, hey, okay. There's just a million other things we could talk about <laughs> with regard to this marina. Oh my gosh. I replaced this already once. Check this out. Chewed right through it. That's our rat right there. That's a big mouth. So. Now we've had a cat for three days, and he hasn't earned his keep yet. Nope. Still looking for that rat? He's a good girl. Did you get the rat? Get it. Get it. Good dog. Yes, get it. And there's Max. Sleeping on the job. We are going on an adventure today. Porto Penasco bound. We chose not to wait for haul out uh, day because we wanted to we wanted to sail out of here with daylight and end with daylight and not have to worry about a certain appointment time. Whew. Check that tide out. My goodness, it's low. And we'll hopefully find a marina over there because no one picked up the phone. Would you call three marinas? And no one's called us back or picked up the phone. Some of them twice. Yeah. So I don't know if there's going to be a spot available for us or if we're just going to be floating out in the middle of the Sea Cortez waiting for our appointment. But either way, Adventure awaits. Indeed. <laughs> We're out of here. Sayonara, San Felipe. Yep. I can't see anything. Okay, I think you're good. So far, so good. Our engine, we're going almost seven knots and our engine is just barely 
warmer than it should be. That's a huge improvement. We do still have a rat on board. We are currently taking him cruising. Um, we're thinking about giving him a name and putting out a uh, bowl of food for him. <sighs> Kitty's doing well. She's now a cruising cat officially. And it's a beautiful morning. Well, we have about an hour and a half left before we arrive in Puerto Penasco. It's been a pretty um, successful, albeit somewhat stressful day today. We are constantly needing to be on the lookout for fishermen and their nets that they're just strewn out all over here, both uh, outside of San Felipe and at the as we're approaching Puerto Penasco. Um, Sometimes it's just a, I guess like a crab pot, so it's just one buoy marker. Other times it's, there's uh, flags and boats that go with them, so you can you can see those a little bit better, but man, it's kind of stressful. If there's a little bit of white caps, you can't, sh you're not sure if it's, sometimes it's just a big giant white box, plastic box, and other times it's just a clump of little soda bottles all floating there, and they're kind of hard to, anyway. We've been running between six and seven plus knots, all day. We tried to shut it down for just a few minutes today. We had three sails out and it was beautiful wind, but it slowed us down to about five and a half knots. And had it been any other day with a less less aggressive schedule, we would have just kept going with those beautiful five and a half knots, but we had to turn the engine back on. And then it just calmed way down. So we had, we'd, uh, had to lower all of the sails and we're about an hour and a half out. So uh, we'll be motoring the rest of the way. We do not have a slip yet reserved in any of the marinas since no one returned our calls. Um, we have not heard back. I think we're gonna try to reach out again uh, here shortly now that we're in radio distance. Maybe they'll answer a radio call. Manasco, Port Captain. Manasco, Port Captain. This is Blue Pearl, over. Just outside of Port Penasco Harbor. So it's good to be here, although it's feeling a little uneasy as we have no place yet to stay tonight. So, 
We'll see. These guys right here are gonna move for us so we can have this whole end tie. Wow, that's awesome. God is so good. We had no one calling us back. No one answered our radio. No one answered phone calls for the last several days to get a spot here. And we just figured, well, we'll just trek on over and see what we can find. Absolutely worst case, we anchor outside the marina or the harbor here in Puerto Penasco. And uh, anyway, we're, we come on in here and these guys are calling us on the radio to the sailboat, sailboat, come over here to our dock. And they moved their big boat for us so we could fit, literally take up the entire end tie here. And uh, I think we're gonna make camp for a week. Just enjoy our time here before we get hauled out and then you're on the hard and it's just totally different. So anyway, this is awesome. People here are super nice. And uh, yeah, anyway, we're excited to be here. Very excited to be here. Unfortunately, I started noticing uh, little pee piles around the boat and I thought it was maybe my dogs were acting out like, you know. Uh, but then we woke up one morning and all three of the animals were on the bed with us and I looked down right there with Kitty and she had just peed on the bed. So I think it was her little pee piles around the boat. I called up her previous owner, uh, and I think I think she was one of their favorite kitties, honestly. So I, they were pretty happy to have her back. But that was just a really sad incident. We were all just starting to connect with this kitty, and to see her peeing in the bed, that was just random. I did not know cats did that. Um, I don't know if it's a behavior issue. I did look it up online, and it said that there's, there's several reasons they could be peeing aside from their litter box, uh, and one of them was they're not happy where they are. So that kind of seemed um, the right thing to do is to give her back. So we did. We're still stuck with a rat, but uh, the kitty's back home where she's much happier.